The first question then, at the start of the paper, they're going to be what we call low demand questions. So bear that in mind when you think about your answers, not expecting too much demand from you, too much thinking. A student investigated how this extension of a spring depends upon the force applied to the spring. It's a question about springs, force and extension. The equation that relates them is Hooke's law. It's a force is the spring constant times by extension. So you should ha have that in mind when you're working through this question. The diagram shows the spring before and after a force has been applied. So this is the before the force. You can see they've added some masses. The force has been applied. The question is first of all going to ask you about these points. Let's read to see what it wants us to do with those points. Complete the following sentences using the letters A, B, C or D from the diagram. The extension of the spring is the distance between the positions labelled something and something. So the important part here is the extension. I want you to bear that in mind. What form of energy is stored in the stretched spring? So the first question, make sure you know what extension is. It's the difference between the original length and the new length. So it's how far has the spring changed in length. And here, think about your energy types from unit one before you answer this question. Try and remember exactly what the energy type is when something changes shape. Okay, it's time for you to pause and have a go at this question. Okay, I'm going to scroll up again and have a quick look. The extension is between this point here, the original length, B, and that same point on the extended spring. So for this first one, you should have written between point B and C. Now for this next one, you need to get this almost exactly right. You need to say the form of energy in an extended spring is the elastic potential energy. If you'd only written elastic potential, that would be fine, but you must have the word potential in your answer. Okay, hopefully you got those two. Let's scroll down to the next part of this question. The results from the investigation are plotted on the following graph. This is a force extension graph, and you can expect the next two questions to be about this graph. Let's read them to see what it wants us to do with the graph before we start to analyse what the graph's about. The graph shows the student has made an error throughout the investigation. What error has the student made? So what has he done? Now I want to highlight for you this bit here. The graph shows an error throughout the investigation. That is an important statement. Not just one error on one of the readings, but he's made this error throughout the whole thing he's done. And you need to think, what is your answer about? Why have you given this answer? So let's have a little look back at the graph and try and think, what is the error? Force and extension, zero force, the extension was 50 millimeters. He appears to have got everything along a straight line. Then something funny happens. Most of these results look good throughout the experiment. So probably not about his accuracy. It's about something else. I'll just remind you to think about in this question, think about the equation. This is about force is the spring constant times the extension. Okay. I'm going to scroll down and then you can pause and have a go at these two questions. Okay, pause the video now and have a go. A 
Okay, the error he has made throughout the uh, experiment is he's measured the length, not the extension. And you see, the spring will not be extended. Whoops. The spring will not be extended when the force is zero newtons. The extension will be zero. You're not applying any force, so you would not have any extension. So that is both your, your uh, mistake and your reason. Okay, you can give this in terms of the letters on the previous one, and you can say it didn't work out extension, that's good enough. The other way of explaining it is to say the line should pass through the origin, it should start from zero, zero. What error has he made? He has measured the length, whoops. not the extension. The extension is the change in the length. Give the reason for this answer. How do we know this? Because at zero newtons of force, extension would be zero. Hopefully you got that. Let's move on to finish off question one then. The student has located the spring beyond its limit, sorry, loaded the spring beyond its limit of proportionality. So he's kept on adding masses, that's what loaded means, beyond something called the limit of proportionality. I'm going to really keep, draw a lot of attention to this word proportionality. Proportionality means a straight line through the origin. So the limit of proportionality is when the straight line stops. So you need to mark on the line, on the graph, the limit of proportionality of the spring and label it P. See it's two marks, one is for the label And one will be for the reason. So try and think where are the marks in the mark scheme. I'm going to pause it now, have a look back and mark on the graph where a point appears, and then try and explain why have you given that the limit of proportionality. Okay, so mark this section now, up to the graph. The limit of proportionality is the point at which it stops being a straight line. You can see this is anywhere just about here from this point here to there, from 5 to 5.5, .5. anywhere there, that is it really, 5.5 .5 is P. Why have you put it there? Your reason for choosing point P is because that is the end of the straight line part of the graph. Up until that point, force and, don't write in this bit, extension are proportional. Okay, let's have a look at the last little bit. A student uses a different spring as a spring balance. When the student hangs a stone from this spring, his extension is 72 millimetres. The spring does not go past the limit of proportionality. Calculate the force exerted by the stone on the spring. 
the spring constant is 25 newtons per meter. Use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet and show clearly how you work out your answer. So you're trying to work out the force. So all of this question, try and think, I'm trying to work out the force. You're going to need to go and uh, select an equation from the equation sheet. And the clue should be earlier on. I've been talking about an equation throughout. So what information do you have? Let's go through and work out what information you have. You've got the extension, 72 millimetres. That is E. And you've got the spring constant, 25 newtons per metre. That is K. Now notice this is newtons per metre and you've got the extension in millimetres. So really think hard, what do you need to do with that 72 millimetres before you perform the calculation? So have a little go at that, press pause now and come back to me and I'll explain what you should have looked like. Okay, hopefully the first thing you've done is you've gone to the equation bank and you've found the equation. Force is spring constant times the extension. That's okay, we don't need to rearrange it. It's a low demand question so we wouldn't expect to. Uh, we're trying to work out the force. So before we put any numbers into this, let's make sure they're ready. Newtons per meter. 72 millimetres. We actually need to convert 72 millimetres into metres before we do anything. Now, there's a thousand millimetres in a metre. So to convert 72 into metres, we need to divide it by a thousand. So if you do that in your calculator, and I suggest you do, rather than do it in your head, your calculator is less likely to make mistakes you are going to end up with 0 0.072 meters. Okay. Now you need to input the two numbers you know that are now ready into your equation. 25 where the K is times 0 0.072 where the E is. Then, now reach for your calculator, input that carefully and record down the answer carefully and you will see the answer is 1.8. It's 1.8 newtons, but you can see they've given you the unit there, so you could just write it in there. Okay. Just to make it clear, this is a two mark one. The first mark is for having the correct numbers inputted. The second mark is for the value, the answer 1.8. If you hadn't actually done the conversion into meters, you would end up with 1,800 Newtons. Now that would be wrong, but it is still worth one out of the two marks because you've only been penalized for not doing the conversion you've still managed to choose the correct equation okay i'm going to take a little break myself and then we'll move on and we'll do question two 